Okay guys, we're gonna start something new. Um, I've realized from the classes that I do in the morning, I usually pull the group in after to go over some thoughts regarding the, uh, the workouts. Um, and unfortunately only the segment of people that are in the nine and 10 o'clock class get to hear it sometimes. So I put together this new segment, which is gonna be uh, Deep Thoughts with Coach Brett. So today I want to do is the sumo dead of Thai play. Um, and this is what I'm going over. The, the coordinated component of the sumo dead of Thai pole is one that I feel when we get is extremely valuable. It's why CrossFit included it as one of the nine fundamental movements. Um, and yet it gets, it's a little bit controversial and it gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes in terms of why do we do it? And what about the shoulder and, and all these sorts of different things. Um, the potency and the value of this movement became very clear to me, and this is unbelievable about nine years in for me in terms of CrossFit. I was with a bunch of the coaches re-validating our level one, and it was the first time with the dowel that I felt like I actually got the correct sequence of the movement and the timing down. Knowing that I got it down because it felt differently, I, I programmed a sumo dead with tie pull the following week that was an AMRAP that involved 10 sumo dead with tie pull with I think a gymnastics movements, I can't remember. And the workout went much, much better because I knew I had greater efficiency, bar path, and coordination due to finally getting it. And it took me literally nine years. So, I have some thoughts in terms of what it is that we can do to coach this movement properly and understand it a little bit better because I finally started to understand it better myself. So, sumo dead of five pole. What I want us to consider when we're coaching it is that we stay on our heel for the whole movement and that we end the movement vertically. So we don't hyperextend and we don't rise to the toe. The reason I want that is because if you've done the full sumo dead of tie pole, remember that it is a progression into a clean. So we deadlift, we extend, we shrug, we high pull, and then we would be, in theory, coming under the bar to catch a clean or a snatch or whatever it is. In the sumo dead of high pull, we've not entered the third pull yet. We've only gone through the first pull and the second pull. So if we finish these movements where we've started to hyperextend or rise onto our toe, in theory, we've entered the third pull and we're now coming under the bar in a clean or a snatch. We're not doing that with the sumo dead of tie pole. So I think that, so as athletes and as participants and members, we can start to feel exactly what that's like to finish the second pole without entering the third pole early to ensure that our timing and our mechanics are correct. Let's try training the sumo dead of tie pole, staying in our heel and finishing perfectly vertical. It would look like this. So you can see I finish here from the side, Josh, if you don't mind. I should be perfectly vertical, and I'm not on my toes. Watch again, I'll stay on the heel. Versus, when we do the second variation of the movement, it's more difficult for me as the athlete or the coach to determine if in fact I've risen to my toes or in fact I've started to surrender at the end of the bar path and at the end of the extension. And in, light, in all likelihood, I've started to rise and or surrender prior to reaching the top position of the movement. If you practice it yourself a few times, I believe you'll notice the difference because it feels very, very different. You'll feel very connected to the ground and you'll feel like you continue to exert force against the ground until the very end range of the mode, uh, very end range of the movement. Again, I don't think that allowing hyperextension or toe rising in this movement is going to be beneficial to teaching the correct coordination of it. Um, and ultimately you'll lose power. The last thought that I'll add to this is, so I did it in today's workout, um, and I know that under fatigue, we start to miscoordinate the movement because I did it. I did double VT last night, 
I didn't realize how much it fried my hips. My hips are totally exhausted. I was able to do the first few sets as I've instructed, so they were all good. Boom, boom, I was hitting the top of the movement, fully extended, with my weight still on the heel. When I got tired, I was pulling onto my heels and bending under the bar, which is allowed when we're coming under the bar and it's weightless and I'm moving down. It should never be allowed when I'm still going up. Try it for yourself, see if you notice when it's happening or if it's happening. I know for sure in today's workout, I was failing in the mechanical efficiency of the movement in order to finish the reps because I couldn't, uh, I didn't have the, um, the strength, the coordination, the gas today, the nervous system um, drive to make these movements work at the 135. Probably should have scaled it today, but I didn't realize I was gonna be fried. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Some things to consider in the sumo deadlift high pull. Like I said, for the classes and for your own training, play with this. I want to see us stay in the heel and stay perfectly vertical in the finished position of this. For the next little while, I believe it will improve the third pull in your snatch and in your clean and jerk in that you won't start to pull under the bar early. Hopefully it helps. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.